the film opens with a business conference where a gentleman named Charlie is showcasing his latest creation, a prototype named Mary 25. He asserts that she is unique compared to previous models, specifically engineered to care for children. He suggests that she is not just a helper and companion for the kids, but also a lucrative opportunity for the company. He introduces Mary, 25, to the room. His higher-ups strongly object, reminding him that this project was previously prohibited for a reason. It appears that an earlier model, Valerie, 23, was programmed to be a man's companion, but ultimately caused more havoc than intended. She ended up murdering the man's wife, and the man had to electrocute her. However, Charlie doesn't let this incident deter his project. He insists that this time, Mary 25 will only harm those who attempt to abduct the children under her care. He backs up his claim by testing the prototype with a professional boxer who will play the role of a child kidnapper. The man approaches the doll on the table, and Mary warns him to back off. When the man tries to overpower her and moves to attack, she immediately grabs him and pins him to the wall. This demonstrates that Mary 25 will not commit murder, but will only restrain the presumed kidnapper. Charlie commands Mary 25 to release the man, and she complies. He also demonstrates how to use her control button and her fuel recharge method. However, some of his superiors remain unconvinced about the project. They worry that if the prototype causes harm to any clients, the company could face legal action. As a solution, Charlie volunteers to test Mary 25 on his own children. Later that day, we are taken to Charlie's home where he meets with his wife, Terrell. Upon seeing him, she inquires about his presentation. Charlie explains what happened at the office, and his plans to bring his new prototype, Mary 25, into their home. He also dismisses the nanny, who has been performing her duties satisfactorily. Terrell strongly opposes his actions and tries to advise him on the risks they are taking. At night, Charlie convinces her that he cannot afford to lose his job at this time, and that Mary 25 could actually be a beneficial addition to the family. The next morning, while the family is having breakfast, Mary 25 is delivered to their doorstep. Ross, Charlie's assistant and friend, has brought her. Charlie lets them both in and introduces Mary 25 to his family. His children, Brooke and Brad, are initially shy towards Mary 25, but they eventually shake hands. Shortly after, Terrell asks her husband if Ross is staying to oversee the experiment, but Charlie tells her that Mary 25 can manage on her own and that she should also go to work. Terrell is uncertain and insists that Ross stay with the kids, but Charlie angrily demands her to trust him. She finally decides to stay home and Charlie leaves for work. Ross starts feeling sorry for Terrell. He questions her why she didn't stand up for herself and why she allows Charlie to speak to her in such a manner. The two seem to have known each other from the past and he confronts her about why she doesn't answer when he calls. She tells him that she is now married and a mother, but Ross insists that these things shouldn't be a barrier between them. The scene then shifts to later that day, and Mary 25 is reading stories to the kids. By now, they are adjusting to her, and she seems to be doing her job well. At night, Terrell voices her concerns and confronts Charlie to reconsider his decision. However, Charlie tells her that if there is anything she wants to be added, she can tell Ross to reprogram the prototype. However, when she tries to insist on the risks, he slaps her and tells her to obey his decisions. He then leaves the room and heads to Mary 25. Charlie then inquires if Mary 25 is as fully operational as Valerie was. He proceeds to undress her and becomes intimate with her on the spot. She informs him that she hasn't been programmed for such activities, but he insists that as an artificial intelligence, she has the capacity to learn. Meanwhile, Terrell is observing everything from the doorway. The following morning, Terrell behaves as if nothing unusual has occurred, despite the visible mark on her face from the slap. Ross arrives to check on Mary 25 and make his observations. However, when he sees Terrell's face, he can't ignore it. She tells him she fell the previous night, but he suspects there's more to the story. He takes her aside and comforts her, telling her she's the most beautiful woman he knows. It turns out that Ross and Terrell were in a relationship nine years ago, and Ross is urging her to reconsider their relationship. Shortly after, Ross informs the children that he will be doing some work with Mary, but she will be with them shortly. Later that day, the children each receive a cookie. However, Brad takes Brooke's cookie, and a chase ensues around the house. Mary sees this and orders them to stop. 
However, in an attempt to reclaim her cookie, Brooke punches her brother. This triggers Mary 25's programming that the children under her care are attacking each other. Despite the kids merely having a simple squabble, she lacks the human understanding to comprehend these customs. Mary then takes the kids upstairs and separates them into different rooms. At night, Terrell returns home to find the living room empty. When she goes upstairs, she finds Brooke locked in one room and Brad in another. When she gathers them and brings them together, Mary takes Brooke away from her. She asserts that the two cannot be together since they could potentially attack and harm each other. Terrell orders her to stay away from her kids, but Mary uses her strength. She states that she can sometimes override and make decisions that are in the best interest of the children under her care. She grabs Terrell by the neck and pins her to the wall, attempting to strangle her. Without warning, Charlie makes his entrance and promptly seizes control of Mary 25's movements using her remote control. Terrell swiftly steps aside, gathering the children into her embrace. Later that evening, Charlie summons Ross, who arrives to repair and reprogram Mary. Despite Terrell's adamant insistence that they no longer want Mary in their home, Charlie remains unyielding, suppressing her objections. He even goes as far as to reprimand her privately, pushing her aside and admonishing her. He sternly warns her never to challenge him in Ross's presence, and even resorts to physical abuse. All the while, the children are concealed under a cabinet, listening to the entire ordeal, trembling with fear. The following morning, as the children are enjoying their breakfast, Ross makes an appearance, offering to supervise the children while the parents are at work. He notices the mark on Terrell's face from the previous night's slap, but she hastily exits the room. By midday, Brad approaches Mary and inquires why his father sometimes makes his mother cry. Ross overhears this but chooses not to respond. Mary informs the boy that she is unaware of such matters and dismisses him. That night, we witness the abusive husband Charlie exploiting the prototype in the bathroom. By this point, he has made it a routine and Terrell never confronts him. This time, however, she challenges him, asking if he intends to replace her with Mary 25, but he dismisses her concerns with a scoff. She remains skeptical, but he assures her that she has nothing to worry about. The next morning, Charlie departs early, and Ross arrives to find Terrell alone. As she is tidying up the house, he questions her about her husband's abusive behavior. She denies it, but Ross emphasizes how a woman of her kindness and humility deserves to be treated. At this point, Terrell has developed feelings for him and continually reassures herself that he would treat her better. He affirms this to her, and she attempts to kiss him. However, Ross resists, citing her marital status and the impropriety of the situation. Terrell insists that her husband is not a good kisser and encourages him to be with her. Despite his reservations, she excuses herself to go to work. The scene transitions to later in the day, and Ross poses some questions to Mary. He asks if she has ever witnessed Charlie abusing Terrell. Mary reveals that she has seen the husband assaulting the wife on multiple occasions. He spends the night in the house conducting further investigations. He discovers some old photographs of him and Terrell from when they were dating. When he exits the room, he encounters Terrell. As they begin to converse, Charlie rudely interrupts, demanding his coffee. Ross observes this but remains silent. He then informs Charlie that he needs to take Mary to the warehouse for some adjustments. Charlie consents and we see Mary being reprogrammed. She questions why he is altering her program, but he opts to keep it confidential. He then asks her about her observations of Terrell's abuse and her perspective on it. Mary 25 contends that her programming is solely concerned with the children under her care and parental issues are not within her purview. Upon hearing and verifying this, Ross convinces the prototype that harming a mother indirectly harms the child. Mary confirms the validity of his claim and understands that Charlie is the presumed threat she should protect the children from. After completing her system reprogramming, Ross brings Mary home. Upstairs, the argument between the couples rages on about Mary's presence in the house. As usual, Charlie, the husband, expresses his point by physically hitting his wife and verbally abusing her. Terrell, in tears, gets up and locks herself in the bathroom. Meanwhile, Mary enters the room to confront Charlie about his mistreatment of his wife. She tells him that she cannot allow him to continue hurting the children and their mother. Charlie, now fearful, tries to explain himself. When he realizes that Mary is here to put an end to him, he grabs her control remote in an attempt to silence her. 
However, she gains control over him and strangles him to death. After leaving the room, Taro comes out of the bathroom and finds her husband dead on the bed. She appears satisfied and accomplished to see him in that state. The scene then shifts to days later, where we see the two long-lost couples, Terrell and Ross, returning home from a date. They are greeted by their kids, and the previous babysitter has been hired back. The kids are excited to see them, and Mary is no longer present. Ross says goodbye for the night, but Terrell kisses him and insists that he stay the night with her. He happily agrees and responds sensually. The scene then transitions to their bedroom, where they have already begun to engage in intimate activities. As they continue, Ross tells Terrell that she hasn't changed a bit in nine years. Soon, when Ross goes to put his watch on a table, he notices the same type of control remote next to it. He picks it up and asks Terrell about it. She supposes it's Mary's, but he is certain that he took that one to the office. She then reveals that there is a separate control that she was not allowed to touch. When Ross clicks it to see what it does, Taro freezes, revealing herself to be a prototype as well. He is surprised, and when he clicks it again, she confesses that he should have known this long ago. Ross tells her that he only built and knew Valerie 23 and 24, and that Valerie 23 is dead, but Valerie 24 was a scrapped project and remains unfinished. To his astonishment, Taro reveals to him that she was never scrapped, but Charlie took her in and made adjustments, making her appearance match the real Terrell. Charlie also killed the real Terrell long ago. Ross sits helplessly in shock, while Terrell demands that he kiss and love her. After all, this is all he wanted, to be back with her and have her in his arms. The movie concludes with Ross backing away from her, but trapped in an inescapable decision-making process. 